Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to repair a broken antler tine and give this guy back some dignity by making him look like this. To this. Now stick around. Okay, so what we're going to use to fix a broken tine is called epoxy sculpt. This is a two-part epoxy. You mix the two together, leave it to harden overnight, and it becomes rock solid just like antler. Um, the particular one I'm working on had a pretty rough year. <laughs> um, he has five different tines that have been broken off, so I'm gonna fix that, but I'll take you through the steps for just one of them and show you exactly how to do it. The first thing you're going to want to do is rough up the area where the tine broke off, remove any dirt or debris, and that way the epoxy can better bind to the antler. So next tip you're going to do is give the epoxy something to hold on to. So we're going to stick a wire uh, into the antler and form the epoxy around it. Now, just get some wire that's stiff, but not too stiff that you can't bend it. Um, a coat hanger works great. What we're going to do is just drill a hole into where it's broken off so that that piece of wire can go down in there. Okay, and then we'll just bend the wire based on where you want your antler headed and actually that's about perfect right there um, and I'll put a little super glue in there to secure it in there and we'll let it dry with the epoxy you're just going to take equal parts and mix them together really well until you get an even color okay so there's two ways you can go about this you can either put the epoxy onto the antler and then sculpt it while it's still pliable, or you can put it on there, get your rough shape, let it dry, and then come back with something like a Dremel and shape it. I'm going to do the latter. Uh, I'm not a sculptor. I feel more comfortable with a Dremel uh, carving stuff out, so I will show you how to do it that way. Okay, so now because this one was so damaged, I've got another skull off to my left here, which I'm using a little bit for reference, but I've got a rough idea of what the tine's going to look like, and I'm just going to slide it over the wire, making sure that that wire stays right up in the middle, just because when you come back to form it, you don't want to run into that wire. <laughs> Now just as best as you can, kind of sculpt that antler to the rough idea of what you're going for. It'll save you some time when you come back to carve it, but do leave yourself some room. Now we just let it harden. It takes about uh, eight hours. I'd just be safe, let it sit overnight uh, before we start working on it. Now you can use a little bit of water to smooth out the epoxy while it's still, uh, before it cures up, but you can sculpt it to some extent uh, before it, it cures. Now that the epoxy has cured, you're going to want to start removing uh, the material, material and just kind of based on how much you have on there depends on how much you need to take off. Probably put a little bit too much on here. Uh, but it's always better to have too much than too little and have to put more on. So I'm just going to start with the Dremel and start taking off some of this uh, extra epoxy here.
All right, so the last kind of step you're going to do is to put on your stain. Now, I live in, on the East Coast in Virginia, and I've found that the early American 230 seems to, to work best as far as matching uh, the color of the natural antlers. Um, I'll just paint it on with a little paintbrush, but what I'll, I'll give you a little tip. Um, the epoxy sculpt dries kind of like a, a grayish color. So what I do is I, I put on a coat of stain first, let it dry, and then I put a clear coat, like a spray on polyurethane, a matte finish, and that way it locks that uh, stain on there because when we come back, I'm going to wipe it down off the tips to give it the natural, the lighter color up towards the top. But if you don't clear coat that first layer, you'll just wipe that off as well and then it'll, it'll look gray. Uh, so I got one coat on here already with the clear coat and now we're going to put on the rest of the rest of the stain and it may take uh, a few a few coats of the stain to get it right the right color so it's all finished um, I did end up putting a total of three coats of stain on there. I put the first coat on, then a clear coat, then two more coats of the stain, and then finally um, another matte finish clear coat just to lock everything in there. Um, so these two tines are completely new. Both the tips on the end. This one's completely new. This is the only original one aside from the brow tines. Um, and I will be mounting these antlers on this skull for the customer and I will post final pictures up on Instagram and my Facebook. I'll leave links to that in the bottom as well as a link to the epoxy sculpt. So if you want to give this a try yourself, uh, you can just uh, look in the description of this video. But thanks for watching. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and learned something. Please feel free to leave a comment below if I can help you out. And if you feel like you've learned something and I deserved it, or earned it, I should say, um, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the little bell so that you get notifications when I put out a new video. Um, so Luis Martinez on Facebook left a five-star review. and He said, beautiful work, gave me some good ideas for my skulls. Thank you so much for sharing. Sure thing, Luis, no problem. Uh, do go check out my Facebook, Instagram, and website. Uh, I'll leave links to that in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, guys. And girls.